G'day all, and welcome to another C++ tutorial. So today we're going to look at a really interesting topic, and that's pointers. So pointers are an integral part of C++, and they're one of the biggest differences between C++ and Java. Uh, you can't really write a sizable program without pointers, and in the background, Java Virtual Machine is actually using a lot of pointers. Uh, the same with C Sharp and .NET. Uh, any language you use pretty much is using pointers all over the place in the background, whether you know whether they let you use pointers in the code or not, they're going to be using pointers somewhere. Uh, even down to the fact that Windows itself, the operating system, is doing almost nothing but pointers uh, in the background. Yeah, it's all an illusion. Anyway, a pointer basically is uh, just a variable that holds a RAM address instead of holding a value. It doesn't hold a value, it holds an address. Let's have a bit of a look at what that means. So variables are boxes in RAM. We went through this before. Uh, maybe we've got four variables, ID, age, height, and weight, and they've got a bunch of numbers in them. Just looks something like that. So RAM goes on forever. That's these dot dot dots here. Um, maybe my ID just here is a long long. Maybe it's an eight byte variable, integer. Doesn't really matter. And maybe these ones are integers. Um, but along with having the name and the value, each box actually has an address as well in RAM. So here we've got these addresses, 57, 65, 69, and 73. And these are the, the physical positions in RAM. So the ID variable is physically before the age variable when it's stored in RAM. And every byte in RAM has an address from 0 all the way up to 4 gig or 8 gig or 12 gig. You know, however many gigs of RAM you've got, every single byte in RAM has an address. And they're just numbered 0 all the way through to whatever. Actually 0, the address 0 actually holds something else, but um, we're not doing system programming, so who cares? Um, it takes 8 bytes to store a long long. Yeah, so ID just here that we said was uh, 8 bytes long. Starts at 57 and it goes all the way through to byte number uh, 64. Yeah, so the bytes that store ID, yeah, start at, you know, address 57, or maybe they start at address 57 and they might go all the way through to address 64. And likewise, the age variable here, that might be an integer, so that's going to take up four bytes. It's going to go from byte address number 65 all the way through to byte address number 68, just before height. Of course, height is four bytes long as well, weight is four bytes long as well. I think you see what's going on. Uh, so the addresses are just numbers. Yeah, you usually wouldn't have 57, 65, 69, and 73. These are way too small. Uh, these addresses here will be, you know, being used by Windows for something else. But when we run our program, uh, each of the variables will be given an address. You know, when, when the computer is actually running our program, it's got to put the variable somewhere in RAM. And each of those spots that it chooses, uh, is going to have an address. And a pointer, here I put a pointer on the end, uh, a pointer is a variable that holds the address of another variable rather than its value. So right here I've got star p. We'll see this star syntax a bit later, but the star p means that that's a pointer. And we can see that the pointer itself has an address. We're not going to get into that just now, but the pointer happens to be at address number 77 in my example. Uh, but the value in the pointer is 65 which means that this is actually a pointer to age. See, the uh, address of age is 65. Uh, the pointer is holding the value 65, so we say that this pointer just here is pointing to age. It's pointing to the variable age. Uh, or we could have 69 in our pointer. That would mean that it's pointing to height. The variable height is at address number 69 in RAM, so if the pointer had 69 in its value, it would be pointing to the height variable. Okay, so in C++, um, pointers have a type, and that's the same as the data type that we intend to point them to. And declaring a pointer is exactly the same as declaring a variable, only we put the star or the asterisk beside its name. So right here I've got uh, int star p, and that actually declares an integer pointer, a pointer that we're going to use to point to integer variables. Or we could do char star cptr, 
So CPTR is the name of my pointer, and the star once again. Uh, but this one isn't going to point to an integer. Uh, this will be a pointer that we're going to use to point to characters. Uh, or we could get really excited and do unsigned long long star aptr. Uh, this declares an unsigned long long pointer, and it's called aptr. Simple as that, really. You just put a star beside the name, and other than that, it's the same as declaring a perfectly normal variable. Okay, and the address of another variable, this is not a pointer, but the address of a normal variable, um, you can get with the AND symbol, or the ampersand. So the ampersand means address of. Uh, if you say my var, so we've got a variable called my var, uh, it means the value in the box of, uh, you know, the variable my var. If you say ampersand my var, it means the address of the box. You know, it's position in RAM. Uh, just as a little example, we can do something like this, uh, int j equals 190, then we can see out j is, and then see out the um, variable name, that's going to print out the uh, value of j, that's going to print out 190, or we can see out the address of j, just by putting an ampersand before the j, and that's actually, actually going to print out um, something a bit strange looking, like 41fd2c, uh, don't get confused, that is just a number. It's a perfectly normal number. Uh, that number there happens to be um, this in base 10, 4324652. That's the actual position in RAM that um, my computer chose for the variable J when I ran this little example. Uh, you usually write addresses in hexadecimal. You don't use decimal, base 10. You usually use uh, hexadecimal. Yeah, there's really good reasons for that, but don't get confused. Hexadecimal is just another way to write a perfectly normal number. Okay, so the basic syntax to pointers. Uh, you can point a pointer to another variable by setting the pointer to the variable's address. Here's a little example. I've got int a, b, c. Uh, just declare three integers, and this might be what they look like in RAM. Underneath that I've written the addresses. This 28, 32, 36, and 40. And we set those three variables to three different values. There they go. So the A's got 99, the B's got 54, and the C has 88. And the final one that I've done here, int star P equals ampersand A, means the value in the pointer P uh, becomes the address of A. So P gets 28. Ampersand A means the address of A, 28. Good stuff. And then, once we've got that value, 28, in the pointer P, um, we can set the, ver the value in the box of A, sort of remotely with the pointer. So to do that, you put star P. Uh, star P means the uh, value in the box that the pointer is pointing to. So if I say star P equals 100, uh, it's not going to change the value in P. It's actually going to change the value in the box that P is pointing to. Right there, that became 100. I think it was something else. Let's have a look. Yeah, it was 99. But then after executing star p equals 100, it's going to get um, 100. Uh, then we can change p to point to c, like that. Um, p equals ampersand c, so p equals the address of c. And then we can change the value of c remotely with our pointer. Star p equals 8. So the value in the box that p is pointing to, that's star p. Uh, that value equals 8, that's going to change the value in the box of uh, C. It's going to change the variable C. Okay, so a basic little syntax summary. Uh, int star ptr, or you know data type star, and then whatever you want to call your pointer, that declares another pointer, a new pointer. So right here I've got an integer pointer. And yeah, it's important not to confuse this star just here with the star that we use when we're setting um, the value of the box that a pointer is pointing to. Uh, this star just here is, is, it's actually something quite different, you know, it just, just indicates that you're not declaring a normal variable, you're declaring a pointer. Whereas this star down here means, um, you know, set the value that this pointer is pointing to. Anyway, we've also got ampersand and then a variable. So whenever you put the ampersand down before a variable's name, you actually mean the variable's address, not its value, the box number in RAM. Uh, yeah, so to set a previously declared pointer, 
to the address of a variable we do something like ptr equals ampersand variable name and that's going to set the value in the ptr's box uh, to the variable's name or it's going to point the pointer to that variable and finally of course once we've actually set our pointer to point to something uh, you can change the value of those variables remotely using your pointer uh, with the asterisk pointer name and then equals whatever value you want okay so be that as it may uh, the most important thing about pointers is why is that useful uh, whenever people are introduced to pointers uh, they usually leave the uh, tutorial sort of thinking why in the world would that <laughs> ever be useful you know why not just change the value of the variable yourself instead of um, you know instead of getting the address and changing it remotely with a pointer why not just change the variable so we're gonna do a little example and this might be a bit premature but I don't care I think it's a good example we're gonna have um, yeah, a really, really fundamental and basic but extremely common use of pointers. So imagine that we have an array of values in some little database that we're working with in RAM. Uh, maybe they're all integers, so we've got 5, 3, 6, 7, 1, 6, 9, 2, just like that. What's that? Seven different variables. Good. Good stuff. Now, imagine that we want to uh, put in another value. We want to put 78 between the 7 and the 1. So this is a pretty common thing to do. Maybe we've got an array and we want to put a value somewhere in the middle of it. You know, add a value. Um, we can't at the moment. That's an array. And the only way to add that value is to actually shift all of these four values here that are above the 7, uh, shift them to the right. So that's four little copies. We've got to say, um, you know, shift the 2 right one space in the array, shift the 9 right one space in the array, shift the 6 right, shift the 1 right, and then we've made enough space to fit our 78 variable in the middle. So that's pretty good. We can, you know, we can accomplish what we want, but the the thing is that we've had to shift four variables right to make room for this 78 just here. You know, we accomplished what we want, but it's slow. Uh, it's okay for four values. If we had to shift four values, you know, that's fine. Four little operations. The CPU is not going to stress about that. Uh, but if you had an array of you know 60 million uh, integers and you had to shift them all right a couple of times uh, maybe a couple of times every frame in a game you're making or something like that uh, this is going to start to take some serious time and you won't be able to update your game you know at 60 frames per second uh, if you're performing this sort of operation every single frame uh, the computer's just not fast enough it can't shift 60 million integers in RAM um, you know anything like fast enough so we don't store arrays like this when we need to add values to the middle nope we use a linked list okay here we go this is where the interesting stuff sort of happens this is why pointers are useful uh, a linked list is just a bunch of variable pointer pairs basically it looks exactly like this so each variable just holds a value from the array that's the blue boxes just here and beside each variable there's also a pointer which I've colored purple now the pointers and the um, blue boxes you know they might be the same size or whatever uh, I haven't actually drawn this to any particular scale just the um, purple boxes are pointers and the blue boxes are the variables uh, we don't know or care what the actual addresses in the pointers are the only thing we care about is that they point to the next value in the list Ah yes, we're not actually going to be able to program a linked list before we've looked at uh, structures and classes, but they're a really good demo of what a pointers are used for. Uh, it's just another way of sta uh, storing the uh, array that we saw before in RAM. But linked lists have some amazing magic tricks that we're just about to go through. So we've got, um, if you start from the 5 over here, and you follow these arrows, these pointers, uh, you'll see that you can build the exact... Uh, sequence of numbers that we had from the array a few slides back so five three six seven one six nine two good and once again a lone 78 sidles up there it is sidling away so this 78 here once again wants to be inserted between the seven and the one 
It's just got to, you know, it's got to go in there. And we no longer have to shift all of the values uh, above the 7 up one space. Nope, we've got a special trick because we've used a linked list. What we can actually do is point the 78's pointer to 1 and point the 7's pointer to 78 and hey presto. We're done. We've now got the exact uh, list before with the inserted 78 where it's supposed to be. If you count along the uh, arrows, you'll see that. We've got 5, 3, 6, 7, 78, 1, 6, 9, 2. But we've only had to do two things. We just changed two little pointers around, and we've successfully put that 78 where it's supposed to be. And the really cool thing is that even if we had 10 million items in our uh, linked list, uh, it would still just take two operations. We just changed two pointers around, and we've successfully put the 78 where it's supposed to be, and we don't have to touch the other 10 million items. You know, you don't have to shift them all up. So that's why uh, pointers are useful. Uh, one example of why they're useful, the linked list. Uh, yeah, so basically just a summary here before we go. Uh, pointer pointers are fundamental to many basic data structures like the linked list that we just saw. And they're a variable that holds the address of another variable. Um, yeah, so some syntax down here. We've got my var, just means the value of a variable called my var. Uh, ampersand my var means the address of the variable called my var. And then I've declared a, a float pointer just here, just for a bit of fun. So float star my fptr would be, um, you know, the declaration to a, a pointer that we're going to use to point to floats. Uh, then we can change my fptr to actually point to my var by my fptr equals ampersand my var and after it's pointing to some value uh, you can change the value in the variable that the pointer is pointing to using this star once again okay that's about all that I wanted to say about pointers and uh, I hope that wasn't confusing it's uh, a big topic but it's a really really important topic for C++ programming so that's just a little intro into them. They're really, really cool. Yeah, thank you for listening.